OpenAI just released a new agents SDK. This one is in Python, but JavaScript one might be coming soon. It allows you to easily build agentic AI with powerful features like tools, handoffs, and guardrails. It even has powerful tracing built in, which is going to really help you out to visualize and debug your agentic flows. On top of all of that, it's open source, so it should be able to work with any other providers, avoiding that vendor lock-in. So let's take a look at how easy this is to use in practice, hopefully as easy as hitting that subscribe button. Let's start out by taking a look at the core of the SDK then, agents. You can think of an agent as an LLM with its own instructions and tools. In my application, I'm going to want two agents. I want a city info agent, which can use the web to look up restaurants in a city, but it can also use a weather API to look up the weather. I then also want a flight finder agent, which can help the user find flights to a certain city. Creating an agent with the SDK is super simple. All we need to do is create an instance of the agent class imported from the SDK. We can then provide this with some information in the constructor, like a nice and friendly name, so here city info agent, and then also the instructions for the agent to follow. Now in this case, I'm actually using a pattern that I've seen in OpenAI's demos, where you define a routine for the agent to follow, and if a request is outside of this routine, you ask it to hand it back. Now we'll handle that handoff logic in a bit. We can then also add in a model that we want the agent to use, so you can use different models for each agent, so it allows you to select the best model for a specialized task. Then we also have our list of tools, which we'll be adding to later with things like web search and the weather API. So with this, I've already defined my two agents. So I have the city info agent here. Then I also have the flight finder agent, which is only different in name, instructions, and model. So we now have two agents, but how do we actually orchestrate between which agent is used to answer a user's request? This is where we can use handoffs. A handoff allows you to delegate a task to another agent. You can add handoffs to any agent, but the pattern that I'm going to be using is to have a third router agent that will decide which of my two logic agents to actually send a request to. You might see this under the name of parent agent or triage agent as well. I've created the router agent in the same way as the previous agents. Obviously just the name and instructions are different here, but then we also have a handoffs list. This will contain the list of agents that you want this agent to be able to delegate to. Now, how does it actually know what the city info agent and flight finder agent are capable of? Well, this is where we need to use a handoff description. Now you could technically put what these agents can do in the instructions of the router agent, but it's nicer to localize this to the actual agent itself. You can see if I scroll up here, I have provided a handoff description in that constructor that we set up earlier. And this just describes the capabilities of the agent. So I've done that for both of these here. Something else you'll want to do if you're using handoffs is to use the recommended prompt prefix. This comes from this package here, and essentially it just provides a bit of additional context to the LLM of how it can use these handoffs. So you want to add this to the start of the instructions for any agent that will have a handoff. In my case, I'm going to add this to all of my agents. You can see I've done that here and here and in our router agent as well. The final step that I want to make is add the router agent as a handoff on my other two agents. This is really useful. So if the city info agent receives a request that it can't handle, it goes back to the router agent and then that can decide where to actually forward it to. To do this though, since the router agent is actually defined after my other two agents, we can't define it in the constructor in the handoffs list. Instead, what we'll have to do is we'll use the agents themselves, we'll get the handoffs list and then we'll append the router agent to it. You also want to make sure that the router agent has a handoff description so those other agents know what it does. Now that is actually everything that you need to set up a multi-agentic flow. My main function here is going to be running this as a terminal application. I'll leave this code linked down below. I'm going to skip over bits of this as I think it's quite likely that you'll be doing this in an API response instead. What we've got here though is we have our input items. This is essentially the LLM's context. This is going to be a list of T response input item that comes from the agent's SDK. And this is simply going to be the user's input plus the LLM's output. Then when we actually go ahead and get the user's input, we append that to the list. The important one to note though is this runner.run. This is coming from the SDK, and this is how we actually run our agents. The runner class here actually has three methods. It has run, run sync, and then run streamed if you want to enable streaming. The first argument that it takes in is the starting agent. So where do you want these calls to start out? Now it's called starting agent because it's not always the only agent that they use. For example, in our case, we're using the router agent. If I asked it for the weather in London, for example, it would start at the router agent and then end at the city info agent. So we'll loop over until it gets a final result. The second argument in the runner.run is going to be the input. This could be a string, but in our case, we're using that input list that I mentioned earlier. 
The run methods actually return a result object that has a few useful things on it. Firstly, if you simply just wanted to print out the final output that you get from the LLM, you could do print result.final output. What I'm doing here is I'm going over the new items list that is generated, and this way I can sort of see the intermediary steps. So I can see what tools were called, what the response of those tool calls was, and various other things like whether it was handed off to different agents. Running my application then, you can see we're asked for a message. If I simply send a message of hi here, we'll just get a response from the router agent. This is because my request hasn't had any information related to the city agent or the flight agent. If I now ask it what's the climate historically like in London, what we should see is it will go through the router agent and then be handed off to the city info agent instead. And there we go, it was the city info agent that has responded to us here. If I then ask it what flights can I get to London, this should go back to the router agent and then the router agent will forward this to the flight info agent. And there we go, we can see the flight finder agent is the one that has responded to us. So that is our handoffs working in practice. Now let's make these agents useful with some tools. Tools are how your agents take actions. Essentially any Python code can become a tool or you can use OpenAI's built-in tools like web, retrieval and computer use. To start we'll use one of OpenAI's built-in ones so we'll use the web tool. This is literally as simple as in our tools list we create a new instance of web search tool. Now you can provide this with a user location if you want to make it more relevant to them and you can also control the search context size but it's literally as simple as just adding web search tool like this and now our agent has access to the internet so I've done this for both of my agents. The other two built-in ones are as simple as this as well but obviously they require a little bit more setup for things like the vector storage and the computer itself. But what if we want to use our own coders tool? Well here I have a really complex function for getting the weather and I want to turn this into a tool. Well, to do that, all we need to do is add in the function tool directive. This can turn any Python function into a tool. It sets the name of the tool as the function name, the description from any doc string that we might have in the function, the schema of the inputs is automatically passed, and then the description of those arguments can also be provided in the doc string. With this directive then, all I need to do to add this tool to one of my agents is simply just add in the function into our tools list. Awesome, now one thing you may want to do is pass around some information or even methods between your agents and tools. To do this, we can actually use local context. Now this is actually a separate concept from the LLM context and it's not passed to the LLM. It is purely a local object that you can read from, write to and call methods on. It's good for things like helper functions, contextual data like usernames, and then also dependencies like loggers or fetchers. All we need for this is a Python object that defines our context structure. Now a common pattern is to use a Pydantic object like I am. Then anywhere we have a run method, we want to pass in our context. So in this example, imagine that I fetched the first name when the user logged into the application. I can then pass this context through to our runner.run as this third argument. Now in a tool where we need to use the context, it will be the first argument, but it will also be wrapped in this run context wrapper. All we need to do is simply extract it by doing context wrapper dot context, and then we can set on this, we can read on this, and we can even call methods. So in this simple tool here, I simply set the context.city to the city that the tool was passed itself. Now on any subsequent tool run or any other tools where I want to access this city, I can get it off of the context. The most important thing to be aware of though is that every agent, tool function and more for a given agent run must use the same type of context. To help out with this I find it's useful to add in the generic of your context next to the agent class. Trying out our application with these new tools then, I can ask it what the weather is in London, this should hopefully use our custom tool function. And there we go, you can see it was passed off to the city info agent which then ran that weather tool that we just created. If I ask it what Italian restaurants are good in London? We can see that this response has actually gone off and performed a web search and if we scroll up past all of this text content there you can see that it called that web tool that we set up. So you pretty much have all of the building blocks that allow you to build out powerful agentic flows. The last main concept to cover from the agents SDK is guardrails. These actually run in parallel to your agents and they allow you to check and validate the input and output. This is great if you're building a tool for a specific purpose, like talking about an Amazon product, and you don't want users to get a free ChatGPT subscription out of you by being able to ask it anything. That actually happened, by the way. All you need is a guardrail function like this one, so a trip planning guardrail. Essentially, what I'm going to be doing in this function is checking that the input is asking something about trip planning. What we then do here is we have the context as the first argument, you can then use the agent as the second argument, and then finally we can get the input that was sent through to the agent from the third argument here. We then want to return a guardrail function output. This will then have a tripwire triggered boolean on it, and if the tripwire triggered boolean is true, it will go ahead and throw an exception and stop the agents from running. You can also provide some output information. So you could add in some custom business logic in here like a swear word filter or various other things, but a very common pattern is to actually run another agent. 
That's what I've done here. As you can see, I'm using runner.run again, and then I'm running a guard row agent, and I'm passing through the input. What this guard row agent is, is a very simple agent that I've defined. It just checks if the user is asking you a request that is related to trip planning. Then on the output type here, I'm making sure that it returns some structured output using this class that we have here. And this class is very simple. It just has is trip planning as a Boolean, and then also a reasoning that the LLM can provide. So we can pass that in as some output information. All I need to do then is get the result of this agent call, and then I can do result.final output for the output info. And then if we want to trigger the trip wire, if it is not related to trip planning, we can say not result.final output dot is trip planning. So if it's not a trip planning request, it will go ahead and throw that exception. The final thing that you do need to do is make sure you have this input guardrail directive and then anywhere that we want to use this input guardrail on one of our agents, we can pass an input guardrails list and then add in that new guardrail function that we just created. Running my application again then, let's say if I asked it what's 2 plus 2 and hit enter, hopefully this should trigger a guardrail. There we go, now this looks like a scary error message, but luckily this has actually just thrown the exception that we expected, which was input guardrail tripwire triggered. So we could go ahead and catch this and then actually return an error message to the user. Now, one thing you do want to be aware of is the guardrail only runs if it's on the starting agent. What this means is if I ask my tool here, what's the weather in London, you can see that we're now in the city info agent tool. So if I now ask it what's two plus two, the city info agent tool is going to redirect me back to the router agent. But now the router agent has actually answered. It hasn't triggered my guardrail. This is because I would need to put this guardrail on the city info agent tool as well. The reason given for this behavior in the documentation is because guardrails tend to be related to actual agents. So you'd run different guardrails for different agents. So co-locating the code is actually useful for readability. The last thing I want to show you is probably the coolest thing about this SDK. It has built-in tracing. So here I am on my OpenAI platform, and you can see all of the requests that we just made to my agents showing up as agent workflows in this traces tab. If I click into these, I can see every step that happened. So it went to our city info agent first, then it was handed off back to our router agent. And I can click in here and see all of the various information about that request. So we have a ton of debugging information. We can even see things like our tool calls as well and what they were called with. There we go. That is all of the SDK concepts in Python. Check out the documentation for some more powerful demos like handoff hooks and also streaming. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe and as always, see you in the next one.